stairwell at the Holiday Inn Express in Sacramento. It is very early in the morning. It's still dark outside. Nancy and I are here for a couple days. We're going to be teaching for a uh, school of urban missions uh, that helps people that are doing ministry in uh, under-resourced places. Very cool deal. But it's a real full day, and so this is the only time I've got. And I thought, since I am literally saying this from a stairwell at the Holiday Inn Express, this would be a good time to talk about the hidden curriculum. I was getting ready to tape yesterday and a friend was in his car in the driveway and he quite patiently waited for me to finish taping till he backed out and I told him afterwards, it's okay, you can back out while I'm taping. Uh, it used to be when I would tape curricula for stuff, it always had to be perfect and it couldn't be interrupted and you're just trying to present content. Things were a little different here in the Fellowship of the Withered Hand and if unexpected things happen, I just kind of let it roll. and that brings me to the topic of the hidden curriculum. Many, many years ago, there was a teacher named Guy Dowd, and he said that in any school, there are really two curricula. There is the formal curriculum. That's what you plan on teaching. That's mathematics or uh, science, history. But then there is what he called the hidden curriculum. And the hidden curriculum uh, is not planned out you don't create a lesson plan for it, but it's very real. The hidden curriculum involves who sits next to who, or who gets picked to be on a team and who sits out, or who is included at lunchtime, or who gets called on when they raise their hands. The formal curriculum is planned. The hidden curriculum happens spontaneously. The formal curriculum is about what we will know. The hidden curriculum is about who we will be. And if there is ever a conflict between the formal curriculum and the hidden curriculum, if in the formal curriculum we say, every human being is made in the image of God, all men, all human beings are created equal. But if in the hidden curriculum of our daily lives, as we talk with people, connect with people, I get all excited and amped up and eager to please when I'm with somebody who is wealthy or important or attractive or highly educated, and then I get dismissive or curt or short with people who are lower down in the socioeconomic status or don't have the kind of physical attractiveness or social importance that our world rates highly, uh, then no matter what I say about believing in the equal dignity and worth and the image of God in every human being, people will recognize that I don't really believe it. Churches have a formal curriculum, and one of the dangers for folks who do stuff like the stuff I've done most of my life is I get to think about what I will say in the formal curriculum and plan out what stories I will tell and what language I will use and try to communicate the values that I most want to be associated with. But it's in the hidden curriculum when somebody comes up afterwards and criticizes me or people want to know who do I hang out with or how do I spend my time or what do I do when I get interrupted. It's in the moments of the hidden curriculum that what I really believe becomes apparent. The formal curriculum is where we declare what we profess to believe. The hidden curriculum reveals what we actually believe. And now Jesus was the master of the hidden curriculum. All good teachers understand this intuitively, even if they don't know the language for it. They recognize that we are learning and we are teaching all the time. And the reason that they have such a great impact on our lives is that uh, what they teach in the formal curriculum is what they believe to the core of their being. And so it always comes out in the hidden curriculum as well. And we see this in Jesus above all. He says to his disciples, what were you arguing about along the way? Because even though he's talked quite a lot about servanthood, um, when they're off stage, 
off the platform, what they're arguing about is who's the greatest. That's the hidden curriculum. Or he says to a group of self-righteous people, let the one who is without sin cast the first stone when they're judging a woman that they caught in a sexually scandalous situation. Or he takes a little child and says, let the little children come to me. If you want to live in the kingdom, if you want to be a kingdom kind of person, you have to do it the way this little child does, where they're not coming in because they're important on the status totem pole. Or uh, in Luke 14, there's an episode where Jesus is at a party, and I think it's verse 6 or 7, somewhere in there. It says, when he noticed how everyone sought a place of honor, to sit in a seat of honor, he told them a little story about that. Now, what he's doing is he's observing the hidden curriculum. We all want to be important. And uh, Dallas also, one of the reasons why people were drawn to him so often was he was a master of the hidden curriculum. Uh, I was at a uh, meal with him one time well over 25 years ago and I had one of our children with me and we were at a Chili's restaurant and this particular child was getting kind of wriggly and kind of restless and I started to apologize for it and Dallas's immediate response was no no that child is the most important person at this table and he wasn't trying to be clever or wise or profound it's just he saw it that way now in Renovation of the Heart on page 69 there's this very strange story Dallas is talking about radical goodness restored to the soul we're looking together at self-denial and he writes about Francis of Assiso giving his little friend Leo a teaching about what perfect joy is they are trudging through the snow from Perugia however you say that to the home of their group at St. Mary of the Angels for their brotherhood to give a great example of holiness and edification in all lands would not be perfect joy, Francis said. And then he goes through these other achievements. Wouldn't be a great ministry of healing, wouldn't be raising the dead, wouldn't be possessing all languages, all science, understanding all prophecy and scripture, even converting everybody. At this point, Brother Leo is amazed and he begs Francis to teach him where it is perfect joy. The reply is that if, when they come to their quarters, dirty, wet, exhausted from hunger. They are rejected, repeatedly rebuffed, and finally driven away by force. Then, if we accept such injustice, such cruelty, and such contempt with patience, without being ruffled and without murmuring, and if we bear all these injuries with patience and joy, thinking of the sufferings of our blessed Lord, which we would share out of love for him, Right, O oh, Brother Leo, that here finally is perfect joy. What a weird story. And I take it that that doesn't mean that if I come home and I get kicked out, I must just simply passively accept that there may be something going wrong. There may be injustice. There may be bad behavior that needs to be confronted. Um, uh, denial of self, death to self, is not the same thing as simply passively accepting whatever circumstances come my way. That's not the point of the story. The point of it is that when rejection does come, when suffering does come, when something difficult does come, that's the hidden curriculum. That reveals to me the state of my own soul and the extent to which I really am ready to say to God, your will be done. I don't need to have my will done to be able to let go of. How do other people treat me? Am I accorded the dignity or worth or whatever it is that I think ought to come my way? In the hidden curriculum, in those moments I find out the extent to which my will really is surrendered to God. Doesn't mean it's a weak will, it just means it's a surrendered will. So that's the thought for today. Be aware of the hidden curriculum. It will come when you're not expecting it when you get interrupted, when the computer crashes, when you get an email you didn't want to get, when you are stuff in, stuck in traffic, when somebody treats you in a way that you did not want to be treated, that's the hidden curriculum. And then Jesus is with us. And then Jesus is teaching. And we're teaching other people around us through the hidden curriculum all the time. When all kinds of trials and temptations crowd into your lives, my brothers and sisters, don't resent them as intruders, but welcome them as friends. They are the hidden curriculum.
Jesus is the master of the hidden curriculum. So look for it today. I will see you next time. Hey, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell so you never miss an episode. There are emails that go along with each video. If you'd like to receive those, you can let us know at becomenew.me slash subscribe.